Hi and welcome back. Today, we are going to talk about stars, the very things that lit up the universe from the beginning. So, what is a star? The main difference between a star and any other object is that stars emit light. But how do they emit light? They produce a process called nuclear fusion. Before I explain nuclear fusion, you must know the layers of the sun. They are the photosphere, convection zone, radiation zone, and the core. The atmosphere of the sun consists of two layers, the chromosphere and the corona. Nuclear fusion occurs inside the core. Inside the core, it is a blazing 50 million degrees Celsius, even more in other stars. It consists of hydrogen and a few other heavier elements. The cycle for which we associate nuclear fusion is the proton-proton chain or cycle. First, two protons collide to form deuterium. Deuterium is a isotope of hydrogen. Then another proton collides with the deuterium and they form an isotope of helium, helium-3. Then helium-3 collides with another helium-3, mostly formed by the same process described here, and finally forming a normal helium atom and releasing two protons. This cycle produces energy and heats the plasma in the core. And when billions of atoms fuse like that, it creates a tremendous amount of energy that powers a star. From the core then travel photons, little packets of energy that make light. It takes them 170,000 years to go through the radiation zone, the convection zone, until they finally arrive at the photosphere. Then they zoom through space at the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second, until they arrive at any planet or to distant places in our galaxy. But the funny thing is, not all of the photons hit your eyes today. Okay, well, you might say that most of them went around Earth to go to other planets. That's true, but not entirely right. When the photon is created in the sun's core, it starts as a gamma ray, a very high energy proton. As it travels through the layers of the sun, it slowly loses that energy by bumping into other protons. Some photons end up as visible light, and some as invisible light, like ultraviolet rays or X-rays. Even though stars are very far away from each other, we know a lot about stars. We know their temperature because of their color. Blue means hot, yellow means warm, and red means cool. I know, so weird. We also know their radius, mass, luminosity, and much more. The reason we know a lot about a star is because of their spectra, observations with telescopes, and by using equations. What are spectra? A spectrum is the light that stars emit in all the colors of the rainbow divided by the individual color or wavelengths. In all spectra, we can see black lines between colors or sometimes everything is black except a few lines that have color. Where do they come from? Every star has an atmosphere. The atmosphere has different elements, and every element, when hot, glows in its specific color. Hydrogen glows red, oxygen glows green or red, and nitrogen glows blue, purple, or red when it's excited. That is why, between some colors, there is nothing because the atmosphere absorbs those particular wavelengths. And if we know which black lines represent which element, we will know what the atmosphere of the star is composed of. The black lines are called absorption lines. That is how we first found helium outside of Earth. The colored lines are called emission lines. They are when an element loses an electron or gains an electron and becomes ionized. So if we have emission spectra, we can still determine which elements make up the star. But all of this information has to be stored somewhere, right? I mean, still, it's a lot of information. When you look at the size, temperature, and lots more information, it gets pretty complicated. So what do we do with all that information? First, you have to organize it, and then you can do something with it. It all started in the 19th century when scientists classified stars by their hydrogen supply. There was one spectroscopist named Annie Jim Cannon who didn't agree with this classification system. She and Cecilia Payne Kapashkin changed the way we organize stars. Cecilia Payne Kapashkin discovered a better way of classifying stars by their temperature. 
Adrian Cannon took that information and formed this classification, O, B, A, F, J, K, and M. Later, L, T, and Y were added due to a particular star about which we will talk in a future video. O stars are the hottest, while Y stars are the coolest. A sentence where you can remember all of the stars. Oh, be a fine gal, kiss me lovely today. Once you start looking at each star separately, you will notice that they all have the same properties, just different values. What can we do with those values? We can make a diagram, of course. A diagram groups the same elements together visually to make data more organized, fun, and obviously understandable. This kind of diagram with stars is called the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram or the HR diagram. The x-axis is the temperature drawn in color from blue, white, yellow, orange, and red, and the y-axis is the luminosity or brightness of a star. The HR diagram presents all the types of stars and their journey through life. There are sections in the diagram that we need to explore. Differences in luminosity and temperature create each of these sections. For example, white dwarfs are hot, but not bright. First comes the main sequence. Here is where 80% of all the stars lay in our universe. Then comes the white dwarf section. We will talk about all of these types of stars in future videos. Then there is the giant and super giant section in the upper left and right corners. With these sections, we group stars by their similar properties. Why is it the most single important diagram in all of astronomy? Simply because it is so useful at visualizing vast amounts of data into a story about the life cycle of stars. It explains the star's beginning, its life, and where it will end when it's time to die. Most importantly, we have all of the stars in the universe in our grasp. I hope you enjoyed the video, that you learned something new, and that I sparked your curiosity to learn more about stars. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!